For years, people have made fun of Slough, but the scruffy trading estate west of London is now Europe's largest data hub and the second largest in the world. These anonymous buildings are data centres handling the vast majority of the world's internet traffic from financial transactions to AI. So why are we restricted in what we can see and we can't see here? Yeah, I mean, customer security is our top priority and customers choose us to put their most critical infrastructure. And it's rare for us to be inside one. Data centres are now critical infrastructure and ruthlessly competitive. The condition of access here is that we don't film any customer's servers. Yeah, so, you know, what you'll notice here is lots of cables. And what that means is this is where the internet all connects. Of the 32 data center companies in Slough, Equinix is largest. It provides connections, power and security for its customers' servers. Demand is booming, and with big tech firms racing to train insanely data-hungry AI models, energy demand from data centers globally is skyrocketing. Not only do they need a lot of power to run, they also need a lot of power to cool. They generate a lot of excess heat, and right now, cold air is being pump through these vents in the floor of this data centre to carry that heat away. And for an industry that's forecast to grow 34% a year for the next five years at least, that's a challenge because all of that power has to come from somewhere. Up on the roof is the data centre's cooling system. On the hottest days of the year, operating at full power, the 13 chillers on this roof consume the same as 4,000 households. Does big data have an energy problem? If you look at the data centre sector over the last few years, the amount of emissions has actually decreased if you, if you compare it against the amount of data that's happened. And that's because we are building way more efficiently. But when I look at it on a global scale, we're committing to 100% cleaner renewable energy by 2030. And that's because we manage that across our entire footprints. Big tech firms like Google, Microsoft, Meta and Amazon also have net zero energy targets with everyone racing for low carbon power and more and more data, it's still a growing pressure. The International Energy Agency forecasts energy demand from data increasing in all regions of the world, doubling by 2026. In Ireland, it expects data centres to consume nearly a third of all the country's electricity within two years. There are 82 data centres in Europe's low-tax tech hub, the vast majority clustered around Dublin. Where are we? We're surrounded by data centres. We're in the cloud. So this is the internet. We all know, of course, that we need data centres, but they need to be done in a sustainable way. They need to be treated like utilities rather than private enterprises, because they are utilities. And we're seeing, like, with the internet, that is a public utility now. We need to see data centres as these public utilities and regulated as such. In Ireland, there have been concerns about blackouts. And in arid parts of the world, because of all that cooling, protests over data's water demand coming before thirsty people. There isn't a great deal of transparency from the big, big tech companies themselves around um, energy consumption or, or water use. Um, so most of these are estimates. One, one estimate for every typical user interaction with ChatGPT, uh, the data server would use the equivalent of 500 milliliter bottle of water. Um, and that's a single user interaction. Until recently, highly competitive data firms have been very secretive with their own data on environmental impact. Google, Microsoft and Meta's numbers reveal power and water demands that dwarf those of small countries. The world's largest cloud computing provider, Amazon, doesn't publish overall energy and water data at all. But regulators in Europe and the US are demanding more transparency and efficiency. Here, next to Amazon's data centre in Dublin, is a district heating scheme. Instead of waste heat from the cloud computing centre evaporating into the air, it's run through heat pumps, boosting the temperature for warming local homes and businesses. This is the supply pipe that comes to us, the, uh, that brings the warm water from Amazon. While after the process here, then return back to them with 15 degrees temperature. In return, Amazon received chilled water to cool servers. A virtuous circle, but an uncertain one. This month, chipmaker NVIDIA launched its latest processor for training the AI models of the future. It consumes a staggering 1.2 kilowatts of energy. That's around 12 times a decent laptop's consumption. The internet has transformed society. But has the time come to ask what we get in return for more and more demands 
on our resources by tech giants racing each other for data supremacy.